As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, O oh God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Lovely to see you today, folks. Those of you who are here at Mass and uh, those who are watching on TV. And I want to extend a special greeting to our sister parish in Rockville, St. John Bosco. Uh, today, Sunday, January 31st, is the feast day of St. John Bosco. So folks, Father Jacob there at uh, St. John Bosco in Rockwell, congratulations. This is a feast day for all of us, of course, for the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time, uh, and a joyous day, a day to uh, celebrate uh, not only the grandeur of uh, winter, which is here in all its uh, fullness, I guess, with really cold temperatures out there, but also uh, to celebrate the work that Christ is doing in our lives at this very moment, drawing us closer to him and through him to God and the Father. So let us uh, continue, let us pray that Christ will continue to draw us to the Father and to one another. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father, the Lord have mercy. You heal the wounds of sin and division, Christ have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty God. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we might honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let us be seated now for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people. He said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet, like me, from among your own kin. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let me not hear the voice of the Lord my God any more or ever again see this great fire, lest I die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet, like you from among their own kin. I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them everything that I command him. Anyone 
who does not heed the words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will hold him accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded him to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Oh, that today you would listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not harden your hearts. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of, of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. O oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Do not harden your hearts as at Meribah or as on the day at Massa in the wilderness, when your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the affairs of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about the affairs of the world, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. The unmarried woman and the virgin are concerned about the affairs of the Lord so that they may be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is concerned about the affairs of the world, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to put any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and unhindered devotion to the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing the man and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching of authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ.
Folks, I just want to say, if you're, uh, if you're planning a wedding for this summer or fall, don't be discouraged by St. Paul's words there in that second reading. St. Paul lived at a time when the early Christian community was expecting the return of the Lord at any day, literally. And so it didn't make plans to, it didn't make sense to plan for a wedding down the road, you know, anticipating a life of happiness because as far as St. Paul was concerned, it was likely to end, if not tomorrow, the day after. So concentrate on other things in the same. We have a different understanding of, of things today, of course. So don't cancel your wedding plans, whatever you do. Well, confrontation, it's something I'm not very good at, personally. I try to shy away from confrontations, avoid them, you know, tell a little joke to diffuse the situation, uh, pull, pull the conversation in, that, in another direction. Let's all just get along. That's my philosophy. Why am I like this? Why are many people like this? I'm sure there, there are identifiable reasons, you know, upbringing, religious training, personality type, personal insecurity, whatever it might be. But sometimes we do have to confront others, not violently or with extreme anger, but we do have to have the courage to stand up for what we believe in. Sure, be willing to hear the other side, but also be willing to say what we believe to be the case. Otherwise, what happens? And I've had experience in this area, let me tell you, regrettable experience, is that things build up inside of us, and those frustrations eventually lead to an eruption that is very unpleasant. And I'm sure you could probably relate to that. And sometimes, we have to confront ourselves. This too can be unpleasant and painful. It can bring us to our knees because it's an acknowledgement that the way we've been living has not been authentic or loving, especially if we claim to be Christian. Lots of people have had to go through the difficult experience of finally acknowledging that their way of living of coping with everyday life has been, in the long run, self-destructive and damaging to others. Lots of people come to the awareness that in a real sense, they have lost authority over their own lives, over themselves, that they have become enslaved to alcohol, drugs, sex, anger, violence, gambling, a million other things, profoundly selfish approach to life, whatever it might be. Is it a demon, an unclean spirit? Is it simply the result of never having had the courage or the help or the ability to deal with an issue that simply comes to eventually dominate their lives? Whatever it is, in order to find yourself again and to gain some freedom over the compulsions that drive your life, you have to, at some point, have the courage to confront yourself and acknowledge the trouble you're in. But this only makes sense if there is a way out, if there is a way of gaining authority over those spirits or compulsions or needs or whatever they are. In today's Gospel, we see the door begin to open. It's early in Jesus' ministry, really early. And the first thing he does is to assert his authority over the unclean spirits. He begins to open the door. It's an expression of power, an impressive display of strength, but it's also an act of supreme compassion for someone who was in spiritual agony. Jesus set him free. Jesus spoke and acted with a moral authority that people had never seen before. In Mark's Gospel, 
The people react with amazement, astonishment, wonder. In Luke's gospel, the people react with joy. Joy that God has come to liberate his people. The power of Jesus is there for us today, and many have found it. From the young woman from Ottawa featured on the news this week, who has started a ministry of knitting tubes and mitts for the homeless, to a recovering alcoholic who has successfully navigated those 12 steps and is now helping others to do the same. There is a joy to be found being free to live your life, not just for yourself, not just at the command of some compulsion, but for those around you, those who are in need. By submitting to the moral authority of Christ, which is really the authority of his love, his compassion, they can now bring that love to others, and in so doing, find a joy they never knew was possible. Whatever happened to that man in today's gospel, the guy who had the unclean spirit, we don't know for sure, but I'll bet that the day he met Jesus in that synagogue was the best day of his life. Now I invite you to stand for the prayers of the faith. My brothers and sisters, with wonder and awe that God has sent his Son to be our salvation, let us be mindful of those who need to hear the good news of Christ as we intercede with the ongoing mission of the Church and end to this pandemic and the needs of the world today. For the Spirit's power and love to pervade the ministry of the Church and the witness of all Christians by their lives, deeds, and words, for all teachers of the gospel, especially those educating young people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence, distrust, and bitterness, for those who call us to justice and compassion over greed and self-interest, for those who take care of our roads or respond first when danger threatens, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose spirits are crushed by the events of our times, for the sick and the dying, the hungry and the unemployed, for those undergoing treatments or recovering from surgeries, for all who are discerning God's call in their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, for those who have died recently, in memory of Anne Quigley, and for all who mourn and suffer loss. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of power and might, graciously hear our prayers that your eternal word will be forever new, filling us with the wonder of your presence, proclaim the good news of healing and love through Christ. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual fruit. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you, humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father.
O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of your service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a simple way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Using the second acclamation, the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by the divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Feel free to offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. For those of you who are participating in this Mass at home, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everyone. Now let us from this table rise. Oh.